Hi, I'm Professor Goins. Welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you're looking for videos explaining topics in college mathematics courses, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you're in the right spot. And let's go ahead and get into the current video. I want to take a look at what is a topological embedding and before I do that let me just kind of talk in a little bit more of a generality um, in mathematics when we talk about an embedding we're talking about um, basically finding a structure within another structure uh, whether that is a topological space or whether it's an algebraic structure like a group or a field or a ring um, what I'm doing is I'm basically taking finding a structure within another structure. I'm taking a structure over here and I'm somehow mapping it um, homeomorphically, isomorphically, whatever, you know, algebra or whatever structure I'm working with into another one. And topologically, we can think of this a little bit more geometrically than we can with, say, a group um, or a field. But let me go ahead and give a visual for this. Let's say I have a topological space consisting of the following annulus. Okay, so my topological space consists of, you know, this region right between two circles. So this right here is going to be my topological space X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider another topological space over here. That I'm just going to schematically express as a rectangle. So this is going to be my topological space Y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a function um, between these two that I'll just call F that's going to represent the embedding itself. And the idea is I could take this topological space X and I want to put a homeomorphic copy inside of y. Now remember homeomorphic means that they're topologically equivalent. It does not mean that, you, that they're geometrically equivalent. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to pick this exact shape up and pop it inside of here, but I could have something like the following. Okay. In other words, I'm going to have this object that has a single hole in it. And of course, anything that has that property and, you know, compact, whatever, the, whatever other topological properties this thing has, um, this would be homeomorphic to the original space and therefore is going to be the original space X embedded in this space. Okay. So that's sort of my geometric picture for what a topological embedding is, but let's go ahead and give a specific definition for it, precise definition. So definition. A topological embedding Now, if I use this, I'm going to use this example up here sort of as motivation for what it is. The topological embedding, now, visually, I kind of think like, okay, well, I just take this object and I pop it inside of here. So, therefore, like this image is the embedding. But really, the embedding is actually the function f. Okay? Uh, so, a topological embedding is a function f which takes x to y, where f maps x homeomorphically to f of x. Okay. In other words, F is a homeomorphism between the domain space X and its image F of X. Okay, it might not be a surjection onto all of Y, but it's going to be um, a homeomorphism onto its its image. Now, what I can do is I can actually like kind of write this out in some, some more, more of specific uh, properties that a topological embedding has. So I can say that F has to be continuous. Okay, um, two, F is injective.
All right, so f is continuous, f is injective, and three, considering f inverse as a function from f of x, so the image to x, right, the inverse function goes in the other direction, um, <clears throat> it is continuous with respect to the subspace topology. on f of x. Okay. So that's what we have as an embedding is it's going to be a function which is continuous. So this function from here to here has to be a continuous function. It has to be injective. Then if, um, you know, assuming based on my picture um, that f is not a surjection onto y, but it is, a, you know, trivially a surjection onto its image, then it's going to be a bijection there. And then, of course, for homeomorphism, we have to have it going in the other direction, being continuous as well. So it's continuous from the image of x back to x with respect to the subspace topology on the image f of x. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the notation for this. And then I'll do uh, a couple examples. So notation. If this function f is an embedding, sometimes we will write this as f takes x. And rather than using this arrow right here, I put a little hook on the end and write it like this. So this right here would, would notate that f is, uh, takes x and embeds it into y. The problem with this notation, however, is that this is the exact same notation where we use for an injection. Now, an embedding is an injection, but an injection might not necessarily be an embedding. And therefore, this is probably not the best notation. Personally, I would probably either write it this way, but then say it is an embedding, you know, kind of use the words rather than just the symbol, because the symbol could be uh, misinterpreted if somebody else were to read that. Okay. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at a um, couple examples. For example, let's take the function f, which goes from um, r2, no, r to r2, okay? So f is gonna take a real number and it's going to spit out a point in the plane uh, where f of x is equal to x comma zero. So let me erase this side over here and let's see what this is doing. I look at a visual for this. Okay. So I'm taking the real line and I am mapping that to the plane using this function f. Okay. And what that's going to do, let me see if I can pick a different color here and have it show up. Uh, what that's doing is it's taking this copy of the real line. So I'm going to draw it right underneath it. Okay, so I'm taking that copy of the real line. I don't know if you can actually distinguish that on the screen or not. Um, and it's actually placing it on the x-axis. So it's simply embedding a copy of the real line onto the x-axis into uh, the plane. One more example. 
For this one, let's take a set X consisting of one, two, three. And then let's say Y consists of A, B, C, D. Now I also want to define a topology in each one of these. So let's say uh, tau, which is going to be the topology on the set X, is going to consist of, so certainly I've got the empty set, and I've got the set X itself, and then I'm going to take the singleton um, one. Okay, So that's a topology on that set. And then for the set Y, I'm going to define the following topology. I'm going to take the empty set. I'm going to take Y. I'm going to take the singleton A. Okay. Uh, actually, let's add some more to that. So A, and then let's do B, and then AB. Okay. And then I have to define the following function. I'm going to say f goes from x to y as follows. f of 1 is a, f of 2 is b, f of um, 3 is equal to c. Well, then the idea is that f is, well, let's see, is it continuous? Um, the pre-image of, so f of all of x, so it would be 1, 2, 3, actually let's go back and let's make that 4, and then I'm going to say f of 4 is equal to d, okay. Uh, so then if I say, okay, well the pre-image of f of x would be all of x, the m, f would be an injection, and the pre-image of, let's say, like the singleton A would be the singleton 1, and therefore that would be a topological embedding. And notice it kind of looks like I just kind of relabeled uh, this original, this, this topological space here as, say, these first three elements, where it's like the empty set, the whole space, and then the singleton, uh, which one maps to A. Okay, uh, so this would be a, you know, a sort of a concrete example of just a small space, whereas this one over here is more of a, you know, I guess, bigger space. Uh, but at, at any rate, this is the concept for a topological embedding where I take one structure and I sort of um, put a copy of it into a different space. Uh, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing.